Welcome to Electra Online. So here's part two to that video for the viewer's request. And we're dealing with a rotating beam, the dynamics of a uh, rotating beam. And uh, what we're going to calculate now is the force on the hinge right here parallel to the beam. So we're going to call that F parallel. And so what we have to consider is all the forces in that direction along the beam. So what we can do here is first of all take the force of gravity that acts on the center mass which is straight down mg which then gives us the parallel and perpendicular component. Now we need to be careful here because the angles are kind of in reverse when it comes to um, uh, like an inclined plane. Normally we deal with the angle over here but now we have the angle over here, which means that the parallel component is mg cosine theta and the perpendicular component is mg sine theta because we're now using the other angle up here. Notice when you take the angle and draw it again there, that this is the opposite side to the angle, so therefore that would be the sine. Here's the adjacent side to the angle, so therefore that's the cosine. Then we also have a force due to the centripetal motion. Now the best way to think about that is to think about it as the centrifugal force, that fictitious force that appears to pull things outward away from the point of rotation, away from the center of motion. And the magnitude is the same as the centripetal force, it's just in the opposite direction makes it easier to calculate the problem. So what we can say here is, is that centripetal force, which is the same as the magnitude of the centrifugal force which is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration f equals ma still holds now from the previous video we calculated omega squared and we calculated the centripetal acceleration squared as a function of angle and we noticed that the, it was equal to three halves g times the cosine of theta so now what we can do is say that this is equal to the mass times centripetal acceleration which is 3 over 2 g cosine of theta. So now we're ready to calculate the force on the hinge parallel to the beam because we know that in this direction, since the beam doesn't move away from the pin or towards the pin in this direction, the forces must be balanced. And so that means that the sum of the forces in the parallel direction must add up to zero. Now I need to be careful not to get confused between this symbol and this symbol because they're not supposed to be the same. So the way to not get confused, what we're going to do is we're going to replace that with P for parallel so that this is not the same as that. All right, so let's add up all the forces. So we know that uh, zero is equal to, well, first of all, let's call that the positive direction. So that's the force on the hinge in the parallel direction minus the mg cosine theta component and minus the centrifugal force. So again, we'll write it like this so you can see where that came from. Now plugging in the numbers or the equivalents, we have zero is equal to force parallel on the hinge minus mg cosine of theta and minus three halves mg cosine of theta. Now, rearranging the terms a little bit, we now have the force parallel to the beam on the pin is equal to mg cosine of theta plus 3 over 2 mg cosine of theta. And when we add those together, we get the parallel force is equal to 2 halves and 3 halves or 5 halves mg cosine of theta. Now, Again, we can check to see if that seems reasonable with limiting cases. Notice that, again, the force on the pin is a function of the angle. So maybe what I'll do here is to make that clear. The force parallel as a function of the angle theta, because it changes with the angle theta, when the angle is 90 degrees. So in the beginning position of the beam, cosine of 90 is 0, and so we get 0 force in the direction parallel to the beam, which would be the case if the beam is like this, there's no force on the pin in this direction. As it begins to swing, and as it's beginning to pick up speed, your mg cosine theta term gets bigger as you go like this, and the centrifugal force gets bigger as you're picking up more and more speed. So, what happens there is, the, uh, when the angle is 90 degrees, cosine of 90 is 1, 
it will be 5 halves mg. So about two and a half times the weight of the beam will be acting on the pin in the direction parallel to the beam when the beam is in a vertical position. So mg cosine theta or mg is part of the weight of the beam and another 3 halves mg is due to the centripetal motion. So that then makes it look reasonable and that's how you calculate the force parallel to the beam on the pin.